my reverential pranams to the sarva devata atita swarupa our dearest swami who is worshiped as jagan mata sai janani my pranams to my gurus and parents for being the light in the journey of my life respected elders students brothers and sisters holy navratri greetings and sai ram to all of you one of the pearls of wisdom that bhagwan gave us as he walked this very earth is this he said always find a quiet corner after my darshan my energy goes from me as i pass you rest assured that whatever i see is transmuted and vitalized this is the power of divine drishti eyes are an important source of energy transfer from a guru to a shishya from bhagwan to a bhakta it is not just a medium to medium of energy transfer it also shows our true emotion thereby connecting us to the divine source one glance from the divine and we are filled with bliss one glance from the divine and tears roll down our eyes in gratitude one glance from him and then we kneel down in retribution for our wrongs one glance from him and we are assured that he is always there for us the drishti from the divine akshi or eyes carries with it that compassion love solace for the pining hearts of the devotees which is seen in the names given to the fem- female deities like meenakshi kamakshi vishalakshi which is also the shakti peetam so the energy center of the feminine principle worshiped in india hence i am inspired today to speak on the transformative power of the divine karunya drishti of the feminine principle the devi is adored as karuna tarangitakshi in lalita sahasranamam when we speak of the karunya bhava the first thing that comes to our mind is that of the mother because the mother is an embodiment of compassion selfless love comfort and solace in fact the origin of identifying the divinity as a mother principle has its origin in ambruni sukta and the ratri sukta in rigveda the shakti is also adored as geeta mai the aspirants who who aspire to study the bhagavad gita begin their study with this dhyana shloka that says parthaya pratibodhitam bhagavata narayanena swayam व्यासेन ग्रथित पुरा मुनीना मध्ये महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षिणी भगवती अष्टदशध्यायिनी अंबा ताम अनुसंधा भगवद्गीते भवद्वेशिनी टॉट बाय लॉर्ड नारायण हिमसेल्फ स्क्रिप्टेड बाय द सेज व्यासा आई मेडिटेट ऑन दी ओ मदर द भगवद्गीता द ब्लेसिड एटीन चैप्टर्स the bestower of the nectar of the non dualistic wisdom and the destroyer of rebirth so what can the divine mother's karunya drishti do to mortals like us when bhagwan revealed his shiva shakti swarupa in july 1963 to a close set of devotees he said remember the mind is like a thousand petaled lotus every petal is facing outwards towards the world there in the center is a flame that is constantly unsteady moving from one petal to another that is the i principle swami said if by will and sadhana if we are able to keep that flame steady it will not be affected by whatever happens to this body around 18th century in tamil nadu in a small village called tirukkadiyur lived a brahmin priest named subramanya ayyar he was a priest in the temple of shri amrita gateshwara and goddess abhirami he was so drawn to goddess abhirami's beauty and glory that he used to be constantly immersed in her thoughts one day the maratha ruler sarfoji comes to the temple and he sees this man oblivious of the maratha ruler's presence immersed in his thoughts 
So he asks the people around him, why is this man sitting like this? And the people around him tell him that he is a he is an ardent devotee of goddess Abhirami. Some say that he is a mad man. Some say that he is arrogant. So he wanted to test the devotion of this priest. So Sarfoji asks this man, what, Subramanya Mayer, what tithi of the month was it that day? Because the priest was immersed in the glowing face of goddess Abhirami, he blurts out that it is Pournami. Rather, it was Amavasya. Angered by the lie, Sarfoji orders this priest to be punished by being suspended on a plank above a blazing fire unless the moon shone that night. Subramanya Mayer was not moved by this punishment. In fact, he accepted it with a lot of gratitude and sitting on the plank above the blazing fire, he composed the Abhirami Andadi. He surrendered himself completely to the goddess. At the 79th verse, the mother took pity on her son and threw her, golden, threw her diamond earring into the sky, which brightened up, brighter than the Pournami day. Sarfoji realized his mistake, and he titled him as Abhirami Bhattar. The Divine Mother comes to the protection of, his de of her devotee, who constantly thinks of her and discards the world. Yet, she waits for that moment when the devotee completely surrenders with no trace of ego or expectation. Her benevolent drishti on her child falls who is filled with gratitude. Do you all know what was our Divine Lord's first Dashara message which was written on 14th October 1946? It goes like this. The omnipotent protection that Mother Gauri blessed her son with while he wiped off the arrogant Taraka Khyasura. The abundant protection that Bharavi cast on her kid as he marched to demolish the powerful Sambhasura. Pure protection that Vinata conferred on her son as he hurried to free her from slavery. Blessed protection that Mother Kaushalya shielded her son with as he prepared to follow the command of his father. Swami says, the protection which guards your abundance, intelligence and every limb of the being, the ultimate of all, is the protective force of Sai. Swami says, may that protective force of Sai be with you lifelong like your shadow. How blessed are we to be the direct recipients of Bhagwan's protection. When an ordinary, dull-witted, simple-minded man from Ujjain is blessed with the vision of Matangi, who appears as Shyamala Devi before him, what else could he become other than a great poet? Blessed with the Vak Shakti and the wisdom, in that spiritual ecstasy, Mahakavi Kalidasa composed the Shamala Dandakam. He writes, Mata Maragadashyama, Matangi Matashalini, Kuryat Kataksham Kalyani, Kadambavanavasini. He says, Mata, please show me your Kataksham your karunya drishti, so that I am blessed with this spiritual wisdom. A discourse on Manasarovar compares spiritual aspirants with swan, with hamsa. There are three categories, it says. The first category is the hamsa, that has a discretionary, discretionary power to segregate milk from water. It consumes the milk and discards the water. Similarly, the spiritual aspirant of the first order consumes the jnana and discards the ajnana, consumes the satya and discards the asatya and so on. The second is the paramahamsa who is aware of his divine knowledge. The very presence of his divine knowledge dries up the water and there is only that milk that remains. The third is the Sri paramahamsa for whom there is no duality at all. For him, Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma, everything is Brahman. Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa was one such spiritual aspirant who craved for Mother Kali's divine vision. He used to talk to Mother Kali every day, pleading to her to give him her darshan. 
he used to ask her oh mother art thou mother at all art art thou a compassionate mother why aren't you giving me this giving me your darshan his pining and yearning went so far that one day he wanted to end his life so he attempted to fall at the sword that was kept at mother kali's altar at that moment mother kali gave uh, revealed herself in front of shri ramakrishna paramahamsa and shri ramakrishna writes at that moment of the vision everything inside vanished a limitless effulgent ocean of consciousness and a steady flow of undiluted bliss was what i experienced when he regained consciousness the word mother was on his lips the divine drishti had bestowed on this devotee the supreme state of bliss swami often quotes radha whenever he talks of bliss why because radha is always in a state of bliss because of her constant contemplation on krishna radha was such a devotee that she herself is worshiped by many people in many in various parts of bharat Uddhalaka a contemporary of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was one such devotee he worshiped radha as the feminine the pra- prakriti principle to attain the purusha that is lord krishna one day a bangle seller was selling bangles on the river of on the river banks of saraswati a damsel who was washing her clothes calls to the bangle seller and buys a lot of bangles from him when he asks for money she says go to the house of uddhalaka and tell him that his daughter has purchased bangles from you also tell him that he has kept a bundle behind he has kept some money behind the picture of radha so the bangle seller goes to uddhalaka's house and tells him whatever had happened uddhalaka is surprised he tells the bangle seller i don't have any daughter how can anybody buy bangles from you saying that she is my daughter then the bangle seller tells him no no she also told that you have kept money behind the picture of radha intrigued by this development he goes behind the picture of radha and what does he find he finds a small bundle and he gets that cloth bundle opens it to find the exact amount of money to be paid to the bangle seller realizing the truth he drops everything and just runs to the banks of saraswati and what does he see there lo and behold he sees the outstretched hands of radha mother radha wearing those bangles calling out to him he immediately experiences the divine call sheds his mortal coil and merges in the lap of mother radha what has this karuna of mother radha given him it has given him the ultimate reunion with the source the moksha our divine mother sai continues to bless us all with her omnipresence it is only left to us his devotees to yearn for his grace to yearn for his vision to yearn for his blessing to burn away all our karma so that we don't fall again into this cycle of birth and death what other better time than this navratri could be to pray, pray to him on these lines navratri which symbolizes the victory of good over evil of satya over asatya of dharma over adharma of sadbuddhi over durbuddhi of moksha over punarjanma a shloka from kataksha shatakam from muka panchashati reflects this thought ma takshanam snapaya mam tava vikshitena मंदाक्षितेन सुजनैरपरोक्षितेन कामाक्षी कर्मतिरोत्कस्करेण श्रेयस्करेण मधुपद्युतिस्करेण द पोएट प्रेस ओ मदर आई प्रॉस्ट्रेट बिफोर यू योर कारुण्य दृष्टि इज ईक्वल टू थाउजंड गोल्डन बीज शाइनिंग it is for this karunya drishti that sages and seers do penance for ages and just like the sun that immediately traces off the shadow wherever it falls your karunya drishti when it falls on us will completely erase all our karma 
I am here reminded of the Dashara celebrations in Puttaparthi in the earlier times when Bhagwan used to come in different colored robes in decorated palanquins. It is recorded that on one such occasion, Bhagwan revealed himself as Ardhana Rishwara to his devotees. The devotees on the left side, the Vama Bhagam, could see Bhagwan as Parvati Devi, bedecked with jewels, the nose ring, earrings, bangles, and a big vermilion dot on the forehead, wearing a yellow blouse with a red color zari sari, uh, sari. And the devotees on the right side could see him as Shiva himself, with vibhuti, matted hair, with a trident, and sitting on a tiger skin. Some devotees were also blessed with the vision of the third eye. We are now in the omnipresence of that great Lord who bestows on us bliss and nothing less than that. It is Jaganmata Parashakti who is here with us. What do we pray to such a benevolent Lord? Years back, on the banks of Chitravati, when Bhagwan was surrounded by some devotees, Swami told them how to put forth our case to the Lord. Swami, on behalf of all of us here, I place unto your lotus feet the same prayer that you taught them. Swami said, pray in this manner. O mother, we all dwell in your womb. The mother bears the pain that the infant in the womb gives her, but she does not wish ill for the infant. Rather, she prays that the infant should be healthy and strong. So too, bear with us. We may cause you pain by our wrongs, errors, and carelessness. Due to our actions in over many births, we are caught in the coils of karma. Forgive us and bless us as Durga keeps us safe, as Saraswati teaches us how to reach the goal, as Annapurna feeds us good food for the body, mind and spirit. Give us eyes to see you as the Shakti that fills all things in all places. Jai Sai Ram. <laughs>